Did uh, was Jonathan Taylor more decisive running the ball Sunday? Do you think? Yeah, I think he was, uh, and I think he just is continuing to get a little bit better each day and each week. And you know, I think that's that's pretty typical of a rookie that's just finding their way through and you know seeing the different looks that they could get uh, and you know being able to adjust uh, and uh, off the things that he gets. So. I, I was really pleased, you know, I was really pleased with the way he ran the football. He really hit it and he really, he really looked good running the football. He gave us a, a good spark there. And I just see continued improvement from him. Uh, credit to Coach Wright and how he, how he runs his program of, hey, that's what he preaches more than anything is getting better each day. And then, you know, not only do you have to preach it, you have to do it. And, and Jonathan's been the uh, model citizen of, of getting better every day because he works it's not just because he's out there every day. It's because he's out there and he's working every day. So credit to both those guys and, uh, you know, look forward to con continue him, to his continued success and getting better. Quick follow. Um, is it, does it take some time for you guys to figure out what he's best suited for in terms of the plays you call for him? Yeah. I mean, we, we always have a, you know, we always have, I think that, that that's kind of with any play and any player. We, what we want to do and how we want to attack. Um, but, you know, we also, it's, it's really got to start with what the players do best. And, you know, and I think that, that that goes through the season, right? As guys get better at doing things, you want to do them more and you want to do them different ways. And um, so 100%, we, you got to figure out what they do best. You got to see what they had success on and, and then and build upon that. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Phil. Mike Chappell. Yeah, Nick, I get the impression that we're finally seeing what you guys expected from Jonathan as far as the explosive plays, the breaking plays. I guess if he gets the ball in his hands enough, those are going to come. Yeah, I think that's just the, the type of playmaker he is. You know, he, he is an explosive athlete. He really is an explosive athlete. He's fast, he's big, he's strong. And, yeah, we're just looking for ways to get him touches. Um, it was nice to get him a touch in open field. On, a, on the pass that, that Philip got to him on the fourth and four uh, that went for a big gain, you know, because he really was able to show off his athleticism and his speed on that turf up there at Houston. Um, so, yeah, you know, we just want to get him touches because we know he's a playmaker and, um, you know, he'll make plays with the ball in his hands. Zach Kiefer. Nick, this is kind of a weird question, but um, as an offensive coordinator, do you ever marvel at other teams going at the same guy over and over again on defense and, and it not working out. And by that, I mean, like Kenny Moore on Sunday, they, they, just, they just kept going his way and it just kept not working out for them. Hmm. Um, is that a product of them just keeping at the same matchup they want to attack? Or is it more just Kenny just making play after play in different kind of ways? Yeah, well, I can, I can be the first to tell you that I've seen Kenny make a ton of plays uh, against uh, an offense that, that I'm in charge of, you know, Frank and I are in charge of at practice. You know, he's a, he's a heck of a football player and there's no doubt we're better as a football team on offense because of the, the types of players we go against on our defense and Kenny's right at the top of the list there. So, um, but yeah, I mean, so you gotta, you gotta think, right. If it's not, you know, there, there's guys and there's, there's definitely certain guys where you're like, well, I don't want to throw at him because I know the, the what the results going to be. Um, some coaches think that way. Some coaches don't think that way. But um, you know, we 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 like to we like to focus on our personnel as well as their personnel. And uh, so, yeah, sometimes that you know that's just different philosophies, I guess to say. What does he do specifically? And we all watch him every week. But what does he do in practice that makes your guys better? Yeah, you know, he's he. I'm thinking back to when we would go against him as our ones versus their ones. Um, you know, from the, from training camp, I think he's physical, you know, I think he's a physical player that, that, you know, you're not going to be able to go block. I, I really, I, for whatever reason, that, that's one of the first things that come in my mind, how are you going to get Kenny Moore blocked when you're running certain plays? Um, and I'm not just talking about run plays. I'm talking about screens. I'm talking about different things like that. He's really got a knack for the football. Um, you know, he's, he's sticky in coverage. You're going to have to, you're going to have to um, run good routes, with good fundamentals and technique, good sharp routes to get open on them. And, you know, we see that every day in one-on-ones, you know, they, and, you know, so it's, it's how are we going to block them? How are we going to get open on them as far as, and what we need to do? And then you better bring, you know, 
you know, we got competitive guys on offense too, but they know when they're going against Kenny, they're, they're going to, if you're not, if you're not on your game and you're not being competitive that day, he'll, he'll expose you. So um, his competitiveness is contagious and it forces you as an opponent or as teammate opponent in practice to, to bring your A game each game or, or you know, or you're going to be exposed on tape. Ken Bone. Nick, uh, we don't ask you a lot about Braden Smith, but I guess what does he mean to your offense? And are you surprised at all that he's been so seamless in the transition to tackle? Man, he 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 brings a lot to our offense, and he just he has just gotten better and better and better and better and better. You know, we have so much confidence in Braden, um, and I've really seen big big growth this year. You know, particularly in in his um, in the pass game and, and his protection. So credit to uh, Coach Strasser and and Coach Clayton Adams to that they've been developing him and, and doing a great job developing him. Um, but you know, we want to be a physical a physical team, and no matter what what we're doing is whether it's passing the ball or running the ball. Like just because you pass, it doesn't mean you know it doesn't mean you can't be physical and. You know, and so, you know, we want to be a physical team and Braden is one of our most physical players. You know, he is a, he, he can just in the run game and the pass game, just everything. He, he is one of our most physical players, whether he's getting out on a screen, every, everything like that. And it's, you know, he just brings so much to this offense and, um, you know, he, he just, he had a phenomenal game against a really good football player um, on, on, uh, on Sunday. And so, you know, he just continues to get better and, you know, we're thrilled that he, that, you know, he is who he is and he's continuing to get better. And he's on this team. Stephen Holder. Hey Nick, um, I was talking to Frank about this yesterday. I hope I articulated it right. Um, this year, I'm wondering, do you, do you think like your offense has, has had to evolve a little bit more this year? And for a couple of reasons, number one, I mean, you, you come out of the gate and you lose Marlon. So that obviously has an impact. You have a new quarterback. He didn't have an off season, as Frank was saying, and just um, trying to sort of, I guess, as an observer watching, you know, like, who, what is this team's offensive identity was maybe a little harder this year to to determine, you know, from the outside in. You still won, and it's not a criticism. I'm just wondering, has it been sort of an evolving process for you guys, and how would you see that? Yeah, I think that's a good assessment um, on your part. It, it, we're, you know, we're always changing as far as we do have our our core things that we want to do. Um, and that what we want to uh, major in, but you know you're always adapting to your players and to what they're doing good and what they're you know not doing well, and you're all, and you're going to adapt. You're going to adapt naturally when you have a change at, at the, the quarterback's position as well. So you know we yeah we definitely have you know we've adapted some things and you know without getting into those things uh, you know adapted some things to fit our personnel and to fit our quarterback. Um, you know, to put ourselves in the best position to be successful as possible. Yeah, Milo. Yeah, Nick, I know you just said you weren't going to go into detail, but is one of those things getting rid of the ball incredibly quickly? Because Philip Rivers was at, I think, 2.33 seconds in time to throw this week, which he's already fast this year, obviously, I think at two and a half, but this seemed like this week he was really picking up the pace. You know, that, that's some, sorry. My dog just ran down the stairs. I'm in my I'm in my house, so I know you can you're saying, "Hey, get, get." Um, so yeah, I think I think that's a product of Philip. You know, he sees and identifies coverage fast, and um, you know that's just one thing that you know whether we're calling something that you know Frank does a great job of calling it and uh, and 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 helping Philip get the ball out and, and everything like that. But even if when we're calling something a little bit more down the field, Philip has, he throws on time. He throws on rhythm and timing better than any other, any other quarterback I've ever been around or seen. Um, you know, that's, that's his strength. That's his advantage to be able to throw, you know, you know, before the rush can get there, before the coverage can, can collapse on a, on a route concept. So um, that, yeah, that, that's just something that, comes with him and with with Philip in the territory with Philip because you know that's just extremely well and um yeah so that's a little bit yeah our personnel with Philip how, how helpful is it that he is that way and then when you if you do lose a guy like Anthony Costanzo or Braden Smith for a game it, it maybe is not as big a concern because he's getting rid of the ball quicker 
No question. You know, the, the, the stack or pardon me, the stat of sacks um, it's, you know, you, you look at that and I don't know exactly where we are in the league right now. I, I mean, I imagine we're down, we're still in the top five, but probably not one anymore, you know, giving up a couple sacks the other day, but that stat, it, it goes to, it, it, it is us like, Hey, you know, the offensive line gets a lot of credit for that sack and, and granted they saw they should. Um, but the quarterback should get a lot of credit for that as well. Right. And, and the receiver, I mean, it's a, it's a true good, it was, it's a stat that we pay attention to. You know, we don't pay attention to a lot of stats, but that is one stat we pay attention to because it is a true indicator of how your, your group at your playing in the passing game from the O-line to the receivers getting open in time uh, to the quarterback, getting rid of the ball in time to the backs, picking up the protection, the tight ends, you know, I'm counting them with the receivers. Um, so, yeah, I think, <clears throat> I think he definitely plays a big part of that as far as, you know, us being successful in the uh, least amount of sacks. And, you know, I can think of times in San Diego too, where, you know, that he, he was, he was low in sacks too, and with not as good offensive line. So that's a tribute to, to Phillip. Um, and I don't want to take anything away from our offensive line because they they do a phenomenal job in pass protection. Um, but it is a true team effort and a true group effort and it, and it starts with the line and then and then it goes right to Philip right after that. So and we'll do two more, Joel Erickson. The way Michael Pittman's played the last five weeks or so, how big has that been for your offense? Yeah, I think very important. Um, I think he gives us just another threat um, to be able to, you know, explosive playmaker. So what does that do? That takes away some heat from TY. And you've seen what's what's happened with him the last couple of weeks as Michael's been as, as Michael's developed. You know, Coach Girl's done a great job of of developing Michael. And Michael's done a great job of working and 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 getting and getting better. So, yeah, I think they uh, that having his that having him come along is, is just a huge asset to our offense. You know, what else does it do? It um, it takes a guy out of you know it takes a guy out of the box um, to play the pass and it opens things up for the run game. So him, him coming along, developing and, and, and being what, doing what he's done the last couple of weeks has really, has really benefit, helped our offense, um, you know, continuing to succeed. And last question, Mike Chapel. Nick, you talked about the, the, the problems that, that a Kenny Moore type player can cause for, for a defense or for an offense. What does a player like DeForest Buckner do when you have to face that kind of player that can do that much from the inside? Yeah, you know, that a guy like him, it can really, it really it frees up, one, it frees up your linebackers, in my, in my opinion, because you got to focus so much on how you're going to take care of the first level first on your way to the second level. So a guy like him really can, you know, you got to spend a lot of time on it. How are you going to run at him? How are you going, you know, where are you going? How are you going to run at him and, and what are you going to do? Sorry, guys. And what are you going to do, um, you know, to, to, to make sure that you got four hands on him at all times? Are you going to run away from him? Are you going to run to him? Uh, you know, what are you going to do in protection? Can you, can you bring the protection to him? It, it forces you as an offensive coach to spend a lot of, a lot of time you know, focusing on that player. And then that, that, that just naturally gives you less time to focus on maybe the scheme. And um, it, you know, it, it just, it, it, it requires a lot of preparation for that player. And then you get in the game. And even when you're doing stuff like that to account for them, you know, those good players still find ways to make plays even with the focus going to them. So a lot of time on the offensive part to, to, to uh, account for him, and then even and you know that's not even that's that's just the beginning because the hard work starts Sunday when you got to go execute on a player like that because you know he's he's a phenomenal player and and glad he's on this football team.